Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you guys for coming to this presentation. I'm competing with uh, Matt Johansson from White Hat. He's got a great preso where he shows off some denial of service attacks. Um, I will show you how to defend. I'm, I'm, I'm the nice lady on that face. <laughs> so, um, uh, as we said, <laughs> Um, this is um, an adult presentation. Disclaimer, this is not an F5 presentation. Um, I am not going to talk about F5. This is not HR friendly and by any way means or uh, uh, not F5 HR approved. Um, who am I? I'm a security geek. I'm, I have uh, 20 years of security. I have all these boring certifications, but um, I'm I got somehow pulled into uh, denial of service defenses with most major banks and stuff like that. So um, that's how I actually started research in this area. Um, I'd like to um, give you um, a quote or start with a quote. If someone is, if someone, if everyone is thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking. And that was sort of the quote and the inspiration that I took to do this, to do this research and to do this talk, uh, simply because. Um, we, a lot of people act just like an army and try to think about us as just like a one another nuisance and it is not actually a nuisance. Um, so let's start um, with um, the reason why I started this. All the banks have been attacked. Um, these guys have uh, actually on September 18, um, almost a year and something ago, uh, they started to um, attack these banks. Uh, what was really interesting with this attack, this was the first time um, that the attack was organized, um, it was well funded, and another really, really important thing, they did extensive HTTP reconnaissance. Um, before this time, no one has done this, right? And how they've done it, it was really easy, you know, you just use um, a crawlers or whatever you want to do, and, and pretty much it's just one big script line that you can use and browse. Uh, the websites and collect the information from uh, those websites. It's really simple to do HTTP reconnaissance, but it's really hard to detect who is doing HTTP reconnaissance on you. Really, really hard. Uh, I would say almost impossible. So how did I feel? I was very really pissed because these banks were down. Um, it made me look at um, you know um, ourselves and say, do these guys really can hurt us this much, like really? Um, what are we doing wrong, right? So as um, every, every good smart guy or uh, guy who's trying to be smart, I made a first decision. I said, I'm going to do some research because this, this, we have to see a little bit something different, right? So I looked at the PHP papers. Trust me, it's a good sleepless medication. You start reading those PHP papers, you fall asleep like this. Um, you try to do some, visit some hacker sites and you can actually buy uh, different types of attacks. Um, for 20 bucks, you can attack JP Morgan Chase for three months, 20 bucks. They give you the IP. However, if you use the same tool to attack Bank of America, they'll charge an enormous amount of money to your credit card because you violated hacker contract agreement. So anyway, just, just so you know. Um, I looked at a certain OWASP, uh, it's more about process. And it has some validity, but um, we need to look at better uh, things. Um, I looked at other vendors, what they are doing. Um, our solution is the best. That, that's the song, right? Um, I work for F5, so our solution is the best. Um, so what were the findings? Um, PhD papers proposed some solutions, but um, there was one particular that stuck to me. It says, we should really, really re-engineer the internet. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell me about it. It's some, some good, good stuff. Um, hack and sell code. Uh, organizations are good with incident management processes. And vendors, vendors just list attacks. And F5 is to blame for that, too. Because we see an attack. Oh, we see Solaris. Oh, let's develop a protection for Solaris. OK, I modify Solaris. I put Pez Loris, right? Um, do we have a protection for Pez Loris? I don't know. It's a new attack, right? Those are the types of problems that there is no protection mechanism. Someone has thought about how do we protect against any type of denial of service attack. So um, there is no structured approach. That was my funny. There is no one who's thought about this before. 
no open organization that actually works on this. A little bit of information from victims. Um, banks were like, oh, we are fine, we are fine. <laughs> you were down and you were fine. Oh, good, good for you. Um, also, there is a little cooperation. Um, I, I'm from F5. I, I approached Arbor and I said, hey, guys, let's work together. We can make this work better. And they're like, go away. So those are the types of things that I, I come across in my life. Um, so pretty much, uh, I felt like this. <laughs> I was chasing my tail. Or I felt like this. I was like, God, we'll never do anything. So as a good engineer, I decided, OK, let's do something better. Um, let's do it yourself mode, right? <laughs> Try to do it yourself. So I peeked over the fence and so tried to see uh, what other guys are doing. And I discovered that they are doing denial of service signatures. Um, and this is really, really not good. As I said, slow Loris, Pez Loris, you know, uh, Kelly Loris, whoever he wants to. If you change the signature, they will never detect you. So this is the problem that we have in the industry today. What you are trying to do is constantly push uphill. And I was like, let's step back and let's try to met find a method that will actually help you not fight like this, right? Because this is exactly what we are doing. So idea, DOS attack classification. How I did this. So I started collecting the attacks. Uh, Anything that I can find out there on the internet. Layer two, layer seven, all the attacks like ping of death. Who remembers ping of death here? Famous Windows 95, right? <coughs> um, I personally am not guilty of using it. Um, collect the analysis, analyze what, how these attacks are attacking you. So what is the vehicle? What is the end target, right? Because the, the purpose is to find the target, classify it, those targets, and then verify the classification and do it all over again always. So idea is to use classification. Instead of developing against hundreds of attacks or any new attack that shows up, what we are going to do is develop protection for few classes, right? Protect the target. That's the idea. Protect the target, not protect against a single attack. Because there is, tomorrow there will be a new attack that will hunt you, right? So these are the things that we need, really need to, to do. The other thing that we achieved when we have a classification and when we develop protection mechanisms was we don't have surprises. Um, it's a large sample it's a, of attacks that we analyzed. It's a large um, quantification of attacks. And, and if we develop those categories properly, every new attack will fall into one of those categories. And we will have a dust protection mechanism. So I felt really good, or more like this. It was like, no, no. Um, so let's start and get to uh, developing the attack protection. Um, I have uh, collected uh, over 100 different attacks. I analyze the attacks, the attacks mechanisms, and look how they initiate DOS. So pretty much today, these are the categories. Volumetric, so let me step back. Uh, this year at DEF CON, um, some other guys have also attempted to do the classification. And, and in the industry, you will find uh, volumetric, this is a clear, you know, we send a flood of data, flood of something. Um, and then there is something with, which some people call asymmetric, and the, the guy who, um, the famous guy who wrote the book about asymmetric attacks is calling them asymmetric. I, I tend to divide them to two. One is stateful based attack, which abuses your timeout or a session state, like slow loris, right? Slow loris doesn't need a lot, lot, lot of bandwidth, which just connects and exhausts your connection table on your network stack, and you are done. You cannot serve it. Computational, like SSL renegotiation, where I ask your CPU, give me the keys, give me the keys, your CPU is just crunching the keys, never completes that, in, and as a result, it stops stop serving your application, right? And then you have vulnerability. Vulnerability such as Apache Killer attack, right? Or a Plesk zero-day attack, right? So those are the types of attack that, that you can do this with. And also, of course, there is a, also and always um, what people call blended or diverse um, Distributed, I call them triple D um, attacks. Um, and then that's pretty much flood plus session state change abuse. Combination of the two types, right? Um, either a flood with something else, right? Flood and SSL renegotiation. Actually, one bank got hit with ICMP flood and SSL renegotiation. While they were dealing with ICMP flood, SSL renegotiation brought the service down. So let's look at some of the samples of attacks. Um, these are the, the samples of attack. These are the tools that you can buy on the internet, the titles of the tools. You will see none where, where there is no tool, but you just have a code. 
and these are the sort of protocols that you are attack, and these are the sort of uh, what are the vehicles for those attacks or the targets, right? What do you do with this flood, right? Um, DNS reflection amplification. I ran out of room, so reflection amplification is not the same attack, but it's it's it's, a, it's, it's good. Uh, so if you want, want this list, that's uh, something that um, you know approach me later. So these are the stateful attacks, pretty much slow and low attacks, slow get, slow post, slow low risk. Um, uh, zero window, slow responding URL, right? Those are the types of attacks that you will uh, uh, see as your slow attacks. Again, they exhaust your connection table. So we have a computational, um, and these are the attacks which are XML DTD, XML external entity, um, SSL renegotiation, crafted header, where through header I actually issue a command and uh, your web server starts calculating and pretty much stops serving your application. Uh, vulnerability abuse attacks, a particular hash DOS attack, um, buffer overflows. Yes? No, it's like listening to old records here. I can see some old historical stuff. Yeah, there, there is old stuff here. Ping of that is another one. I said I just put the samples together um, and so that I can actually do the classification of attacks. Why? I need this classification to develop protection mechanisms. So. Um, distributed denial of service, you have slim flood, sl slow loris. That was one of the attacks. And then slim flood and crafted URL. So when they do a URL reconnaissance, they craft URLs that are actually responding slow. And it's, it's also a stateful or a computational types of attacks. So we're getting somewhere. I, I can see sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. So we're going to go back to protection mechanisms. Again, safety guy. Uh, how do we develop protection mechanisms for volumetric types of attacks? For volumetric types of attacks, you have different um, offerings, but DOS as a service is one of the offerings where you spread the uh, attack over the internet. And pretty much what you want to do with volumetric attacks, keep them out of your data center, deal with those at the perimeter, right? Um, you can do BGP. Um, you can use redirects. Um, there was a talk this year at the Black Hat. If you are using... Um, cloud service, DOS as a service, and you are using DNS redirects, it's a really bad idea. You do not have DOS protection if you do that. Um, so make sure that you verify with your cloud service provider what you are trying to do, because I can attack your IP directly, and it will completely bypass this cloud service. Um, session resets, rate limiting, uh, insert client protection, verification. What, how, is, how does that work? When you get a flood, you want to know which sessions are good, which sessions are bad. So have a tool that actually inserts some client verification check, whether it's a browser or a botnet, right? That's, that's something that you, you should be doing. But in general, you try to keep this at the perimeter. So look at the stateful protection, right? Uh, how does stateful protection attack work? These are really, really, um, really hard to protect. Um, what does it abuse? It abuses your timeouts, right? Because it abuses your timeouts, you have your network systems, web servers, uh, your web applications. Um, Apache default timeout is what, 30 minutes? 30 minutes. How many sessions can I generate with, within 30 minutes? Ton. Um, so it, it is really, really hard. Um, what we have found that it's, it's better if you have a proxy-based firewall or your application delivery controller that sits in front of your applications, you can use it as a tool that actually can control the number of connections that are being established towards your servers. So it takes a little bit more of capacity planning and it takes more of you know, calculations on, on your behalf, but to protect against these types of attacks, you should be able to control number of connections or concurrent connections that you can handle with your infrastructure. That's the basic idea, yes? Where would you recommend getting the data for the timeout values for the team? So you start from the, the front, your firewall at the beginning, like at the perimeter, then you start to do your IDPS, you start with your um, proxy or application delivery controller, you start with your servers, um, and anything in between. So you need to align them. The biggest problem here is that your firewall, your ADC, uh, your server can handle different numbers of connections, right? Concurrent connections. That's a really, really important thing because um, why firewalls fa fail over when, when this attack, when solar is happens, who falls down first? Firewalls. Um, 
Why? Because when you have 150,000 concurrent connections, no matter how you configure the firewall, their network stack is going to be busy. They go down. They stop serving packets, right? So those are the types of things that um, you, know, you can do and have a mechanism somewhere on your network where you can remove all the session first. So you should be able to have a timer and say, if the session is older than five minutes, I'm going to clean it. I don't care what it is. Clean it. And, for the, this, and if you build that type of a protection, you don't care is it a slow loris, is it a pez loris, or is it a slow post, or whatever type of slow attack you have. You have a good protection mechanism. Another one is for your computational. And this, is, this one is really, really hard. Um, XML DTD attack is the one where I, I, I send the calculation to the, you know, your web server. Um, your SSL renegotiation, this is something that you will really, really need to think about. But um, there is no real protection mechanisms for this one, right? Because it's a normal request. It's a normal application request. I ask your web server to do something, and web server does it because that was what I, what I asked it to do. Um, so you really, really need to analyze your environment. Another one, and it's, a, again, a simple solution. That's why you have your application delivery controller. That's why you have your proxy in between. Um, this proxy can actually offload SSL, and this is where you can control your SSL. Also, this is where you can actually uh, implement XML protection. This is the area where your WAF will, can be used for your denial of service protection. Web application firewall can be used for it. Why? If you, go, if you go back and say, you see here, XML DTD attack, there is no denial of service solution that will detect that attack. Only web application firewall will, right? So your WAF combined with these things will actually help you. And this is where people st don't think, but if you, if you have a WAF, that's another tool for you because it prevents these types of attacks and the next type of attacks, which is vulnerability types of attacks. So vulnerability abuse attacks, right? Vulnerability abuse attacks are the ones that we have to develop good application code for. Um, and that's, I think we all do this. Right? Um, the, recent, the recent Plesk vulnerability, Plesk is um, a web performance measuring tool. I don't know, it's free, open source. Well, the, they had a zero day vulnerability where you actually, you can issue um, via PHP script a system command, right? So um, it was really, really good. Um, anyway, this is something that you need to protect from. And this is where your web application firewall is getting the place. So if you use uh, scanner, web application, like white hat application scanner, scan your application. Use your WAF to protect you against denial of service. It sounds contradictory, but it's true, right? Attacks such as Apache Killer, if you don't protect it with your web application firewall, there is no way you, you can protect it. And the, the purpose of that attack is just to bring down your web server. So we have um, done this for um, distributed denial of, I call it triple D, or blended denial of service attacks. You have to develop protection for all four types of attacks in the first place. Second, you have to develop a good detection mechanism. And third, you have to have a good incident management process. Once you detect it, you really, really, really need to um, have a good alerting and stuff. This is where OVAS practices are coming into a play, big time. Make sure that all hands are there, business, IT, vendors, um, every vendor should be there and uh, should be helping you. So out of all these talks, let's do some like stepping back and looking at what we talked about. Um, so for volumetric attacks, you want to keep them out there. You want to keep them at the perimeter, right? As far as you can from your pipe. Um, ISP, DOS as a service, rate limit, BGP redirect, any tool that you can use there is good. However, this, this guy here must be able to handle first 10, 15 minutes of the load. Before your DOS as a service kicks in, this firewall has to handle the load, right? This is something that you really need to measure and properly architect for. And the other side is your in-house, in, in internal, in your data center. And you see three types of attacks. We have here stateful, was for slow, low and slow, slow or slow post, those types of attacks. These computational, such as SSL renegotiation, 
and vulnerabilities such as Apache Killer, right? Those types of attacks are something that you really, really need to protect within your organization. So make sure that you have a proxy firewall of some sort or use your application delivery controller, whatever it is, to tune the connections, do the SSL offload, uh, make sure that you do the, uh, cap have a capability to address zero day as attack, to address vulnerabilities, scan your applications. It is, sounds funny, but for vulnerability denial of service, I'm not looking, I might be entering SQL injection, but not to steal your data, but just to bring down your server, right? And that's something that people don't often think about. So, and then you have at the back your applications and, and stuff. So this is your total protection. If you have all these, all four of these, I, I warrant you, you won't get any problems with any, any DOS attack, for sure. But if one of these is, is, is not fine-tuned, you're gonna get screwed big time. So, um, Incident process um, management for ultimate denial of service protection. Again, standard process, people process technology. I'm not gonna bug you much with this, but this is something that you really need to have for denial of service protection. So, we talked about types of attacks, we talked about um, how to protect, what is the best architecture. Now we're going to talk about lessons learned. What did we learn from our previous attacks and why am I here to talk to you about? Um, what I've learned is uh, a lot of vendors, um, including my company, will tell you we do everything. Um, and th that is not true, actually. Um, I wonder why is that not true. But I've, I've came across recently um, uh, guys that do a lot of denial of service as a service or contact delivery networks wanted to sell um, their uh, solution as a denial of service solution. Um, and if you buy that solution, this content delivery network or IDPS uh, solution, um, you have a problem with three types of attacks. And the attacks are listed here. Um, and if you want me to get you more, I can. Uh, but these are the most popular ones. Um, so your content delivery network, as we said, should help you protect against the attacks that are out there at the perimeter. Why? Why is that? For every single of these attacks here, slow post, slow get for this crafted URL, you have to understand every single application session. That's the biggest problem. When you are out there in the cloud, do you know what's the state of the application in your data center? Of course not. And if they tell you that they know, they lie outright. The same way as I would say, oh, F5 knows really well how to protect you against volumetric types of attacks. No, we don't, right? So those are the types of things that really, really think about, to think about when you are designing your denial of service solution. And those are the types of things that I'm sort of trying to cover here in your general terms and, and approach, where these are the types of attacks and this is where you position your defense mechanisms, right? And you don't care, again, the benefit of this is you don't care, is it a new attack or an old attack? Uh, there was a huge hoopla this summer uh, oh, there is a new dirt jumper, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what is a dirt jumper? It's an HTTP flood attack, period. Oh, it's a flood attack. Do I have DOS protection out there? Yeah. I don't care if it's a dirt jumper version two or it's called September or it's called dirt jumper. I don't care. The target is the same. I have mechanisms that are built into my infrastructure and my technology that protect against that. Done, right? Very simple. I can sleep at night then, right? Uh, so, um, invest in both perimeter and on-premise. If they tell you my perimeter thing solves everything, no. Um, build a DOS resilient tiered architecture. Make sure that you have tiers, front tier, perimeter, and back tier at least. Um, mitigate layer three and layer four attacks with rate shaping, snap pool, you know, some flood control. Um, mitigate layer seven attacks with secondary tiers. So um, what, what some of the guys that, that I work with were have done is um, they have an application, it runs into two data centers, they got attacked. What they started to do is, oh, okay, now I'm going to introduce CAPTCHA, right? It's an additional control that weeds out botnets from a real browser or a real user, right? And you can instigate it like this, where? On your web application firewall, on your proxy firewall, on your application delivery controller, all these things. So see what you have in your infrastructure and implement this. It's a good, simple protection mechanism. Um, blacklist, people like to lose, use blacklist. Um, and this is something that I'm, I'm not really a fan of. I never recommend it. 
Um, this is only as a last resort. There is um, uh, stuff like um, um, uh, Webroot sells uh, IP intelligence, where you can detect whether people are coming. There is about nine, ten categories: botnets, uh, 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 denial of service, anonymous proxy, IP addresses. And if you subscribe to that database, you can say, "Oh, now I'm going to implement IP intelligence database." When the attack starts, it's way better than just creating your own blacklist, which is which can eliminate a lot of users, right? And you want to serve good users. You don't want to stop the service. Another thing that I would like to point here is don't do denial of service tests like this. Oh, I take my laptop, get slowloris.pl script from the internet, I run slowloris, and then I check whether my denial of service screams, oh, it's slowloris. Guess what? In real life, that will never help you. In real life, what you need to do is to simulate real life, generate the good traffic, and then generate a ton of attacks towards your infrastructure and see whether you can still browse your own website. Because that's the success criteria. Success criteria is, can I browse my website while I am under the attack? Not, oh, I detected it screams it's all lorries, right? That's not the purpose. The purpose is, I got to serve my customers while I'm dealing with the attack, right? That's how you should be testing your DOS solutions. Um, so one part of the RAM book, um, create your own RAM book. So what we've done, at the beginning it was like, and September 18 or 19, it was like um, there was 100 people at every single bank and they were all looking after everything. Um, today, it's like two or three individuals. The attack is happening next Tuesday, we know about it. And we, we have procedures, we know what are we going to do. We have different controls that we put in place. Either perimeter and stuff, we tell our ISP, hey, you better look, watch after this and stuff like that. So it was really, really, um, uh, really, really good experience and today what they are doing is actually really, really process driven and really, really ironed out. Um, make sure that you have all these uh, um, addressed in your RAM book or, or you know, guide how to protect against DOS. It's really going to help you. Um, so I think this is all about is, uh, experiences. Um, the decision that was I made, I have, uh, um, my consumers are large banks and they, they always scream at me. Um, so I, I was like pushing back and I was like, okay guys, help me help you so that I can actually give you some, <laughs> some real background. And the reason why I was screaming that was um, there is no alliance for open DDoS. Um, were you attacked? No. Are you good? Yes. Oh, are you sure? You were down. <laughs> That's not a really good state, right? Um, so if you, if you do a, you know, Connect with vendors, uh, start an open alliance. It, it's your power to call and say, F5, what can you really do to help us against DDoS, right? Um, Arbor, help us, Prolexic. Don't, like, I have customers like, oh, we bought Prolexic. I'm like, okay, um, let me run some couple of attacks against your, I, I single-handedly from my laptop will bring down your service. No, you won't. Okay, well, let's, do you want to bet? Um, so um, usually win the argument. Um, make sure that you know you, you integrate with the technology. We integrate with uh, vendors. Be more proactive because it's it's about your environment, right? So what I'm preaching for um, is Open DOS Protection Alliance. Um, it's it's big, sort of part of the OWASP uh, body. There is a denial of service thing uh, that is being uh, uh, started up. But please uh, open up an act. Um, Today, as, as um, my, my brother from the other side, the keynote said, um, it is not a game anymore. When they attack you, they know your website. They've done the research, what they can do. Um, one of the banks um, has um, um, a capability to, you can find where is the closest ATM on their website. But that takes time and a lot of resources because it's poorly written. Guess how they broke, got brought down? Someone was searching for ATMs all over the world. So searching for an ATM in China. And <laughs> the site was calculating where is the ATM in China. Anyway, just, just so to, like there are application logic things that you have to, uh, you know, uh, think about. So, um, one thing is, um, if you want to test your stuff, um, OWASP has a good tool. Um, I think that this is a little bit older, version 3.6. I think that there is a newer one. 
Um, so um, I have it on my laptop. I was like, okay, let me check your services, whether they work really, right? Um, it's, it's a really nice and handy tool. Um, there is a Novas project, um, a security ecosystem project. Um, after the banks got attacked, um, this body is um, um, sort of association of all the big banks in US. And um, um, I was fortunate to get into the meeting, but it's a closed door meeting. Um, and the reason why we were invited was to see um, which vendor they can blame. Um, so, um, and it was a closed door meeting and they are still doing it closed door. And I said to, got to them, guys, if it's a closed door meeting, you will never go anywhere. Something like, again, the keynote guy mentioned, uh, you cannot provide input because you are not a bank or you're not a banker. Anyway, let us feel like we're champions. We can make this happen, right? We can really do make this happen. Use these four categories. It's really gonna help you by, to build your architecture. And I wanted to also raise some um, stuff. Don't just attack people with your laptops. Um, ain't gonna go well for you. Um, and this is an example. Um, and she, um, she actually um, was freed. Um, but um, I just wanna point to this. If you b b uh, block the traffic on the street, it's a $200 fine and you spend the night in jail. Um, if you DOS someone on the internet, you can end up in, in a prison for 15 years. Um, something to think about. But yet, it's still happening, right? Um, so um, I want to leave you with this quote. Um, Whenever you fight on the side of the majority, it's time to um, pause and reflect. Step back and say, OK, what am I doing wrong? Or am I doing something that I have no clue about, right? Um, it took me uh, like a, a, almost five, six months to get to like all these types of attacks. And, and the reason why I have four, not three, is because you really have a different protection mechanisms for this specific target. And this is what you need to actually um, uh, look after and, and protect against. Um, so that's all for me. Um, any questions? Feel free to shoot. I, it's, um, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for coming. And, and um, if you want a copy, let me know. Uh, you have my email. Shoot an email to me. Um, I travel. I don't use phone. I just use email. Um, thank you.